Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to my library and my eyeballs. If you are new here, I basically filmed all my videos over the summer outside by the pool. It was a lot of fun. Summer's over, pool's closed, it is fall, and it's time to talk about fall fragrances. Last week I talked about my designer fragrances, 10 of my favorite designer fragrances to wear for the fall. Tonight are the niche fragrances, fragrances I am dying to wear. Some of them I've already started wearing. In this beautiful cold weather we're having here, it's about 40 degrees, mid 40s in the morning. It is warming up during the day, but fall is here. I'm just like many of you, fall fragrances, cold weather fragrances are some of my very favorite fragrances to wear. And I'm gonna try to do most of my videos from here on out in a top 10 kind of a thing, or stay close to the number of 10. It just makes life easy in many ways. When I was gathering my fragrances for this video about an hour ago, I had 17. <laughs> That's a long video and it's long to edit. So I narrowed it down, I got it down to 11. 11 fragrances I am dying to wear for fall, so let's just dive right in. I'm gonna start my list with a fragrance that I have been absolutely loving. I've only had it for a couple months and this is like I was head over heels for this fragrance, but many other fragrance in this line. This is an Italian line, um, it's Milano Fragranzi, and this particular fragrance is Basilica. This fragrance is for the incense lover, and by the way, incense is one of my very favorite notes. This is a very unique gourmandy type of an incense. This is not your typical churchy or liturgical incense. This is a savory take on incense. This incense is all about the push and pull of notes. This fragrance right off the bat starts off with some aromatic notes. There's uh, rosemary and thyme, but there's a pull from milky notes that keeps us from being kind of bitter or too earthy or like dirty spice rack spices. So the milky notes combined with the thyme and the rosemary give it almost this chewy. It's almost a chewy fragrance. This has a bite to it. There's a lovely smoky incense and there's a sweetness in here. There's got to be amber in here. And anchoring all these unique notes is a nice woody base. I don't know, maybe maybe sandalwood, probably sandalwood or cedar, but spectacular, unique, gourmandy take on an incense fragrance that I adore. I've already worn it a handful of times, and this has amazing performance. And when I wear this fragrance, I cannot stop sniffing my wrist or arm or wherever I spray it. It's just unbelievable, one of my favorites. I like to always have a nice floral in my fall fragrance arsenal. And the one that I've typically been going to for the past two years has been 100 Silent Ways. I still love that fragrance. I'm still going to wear it in the colder months. The one I'm gonna be reaching for more, because it's relatively new to my collection, I got it at the beginning of 2022, is one by Inicio Parfums, and this is Psychedelic Love, oh my gosh. I love this fragrance. So the, the main florals in here, you get you start off the bat with a note of ylang ylang. And the type of ylang ylang in here smells like a banana, like a creamy banana type of an ylang ylang. It's very powdery, and the powderiness is due to the other floral in here, which is heliotrope. So you've got this creamy ylang ylang, and then you get a powdery, almost almondy type of a floral heliotrope. The dry down is still soft and powdery, but you get this nice, I don't know, this milky sandalwood in the base. It's a very soft, smooth sandalwood. There's some sort of sweetness in here. I'm gonna guess vanilla. Oh, and it's just this beautiful, sweet floral that's perfect for fall. It's not a beast like Atomic Rose, Ooze for Greatness, Bless Baraka. It's not any of that. It's on the softer side. It's more demure but it lasts a solid six hours. It is gorgeous. And I find this just super, it's very feminine, very soft, very likable. A gorgeous floral that is just meant for this type of colder weather we're heading into. The next one is definitely more unisex and you really have to like patchouli to enjoy this, but I showed this in my Hidden Gems from last year. It's by Arquiste and it's called Misfit. This was voted best niche fragrance of 2020 and it's still to this day completely flies under the radar. I do not know how. I think it's a stunning fragrance. I found it down in Houston when I was at one of my very favorite fragrance shops down there that basically has every fragrance you can think of, every niche or indie house. And I was, I had sniffed probably hundreds of fragrances and came across this one and it was like, I'm done. 
I'm getting a bottle of this for sure. It has a lot of notes that can be scary if you just look at them on paper. Lavender, um, carrot seed, angelica, so very aromatic. And it has musk, there's rose in here. But this is all about the base notes. This has a very beautiful patchouli, labdanum, tonka, and tolu balsam that makes this such a warm, rich, resinous, deep, earthy fragrance with a lot of depth and a lot of dimension. Now, if you like your light florals or your fruity florals, this probably won't be up your alley, but if you like some heavier ambers, fragrances that have patchouli in them, this could definitely be a sleeper. It has a little bit of sweetness, but it is in no way a gourmand. And this is a powerhouse. It's just like two or three sprays, I will get a solid six to eight hours. You spray more, you're gonna get all day. I totally love this fragrance. And this is one that is 100% unisex. A lot of people might think it leans masculine, but love it. Next one up is a total lifer for me. I adore this fragrance and I will have it forever. <laughs> it is my beloved Milky Musk by Paloma de Parfum. I didn't think anyone ever wore this and I posted it to Instagram and I got like hundreds of people reply and say, oh my gosh, I love that fragrance. So this is a creamy, smooth, milky sandalwood that's not lactonic. There are no milk notes in here, but it's still very creamy and it must be from the sandalwood in here, but the sandalwood in here is very wood chippy. It smells like wood chips coated in cream and almost has a slight pencil shavy type of a scent. Oh man, oh, I love this fragrance so much. Very different than a lot of typical sandalwoods that are on the market. And this is my, this is my, one of the fragrances I wear when I go hiking because it just smells like the outdoors. In fact, when I wear this and I'll come home, I can still smell it on my jacket. My husband will say, you smell like the woods. An affordable version that smells similar to this is Juliet Has a Gun Sunny Side Up. There are a lot of similarities between the two. That one is a little bit more affordable, but I think they're both great fragrances. And like I said, this one is a lifer for me. Still keeping with sandalwood, but kind of on the opposite end, a very different sandalwood, a sweet, almost gourmandy sandalwood is Santel Austral that I love to wear in the colder months. If you are one of those people that loves the way Santel Complet by Fragrance Du Bois smells, but are very disappointed by the terrible performance, this one might be a good alternative. I got the Discovery set from this house last year and immediately fell in love with half the house and just slowly but surely, one by one, have been acquiring the bottles. I have Incense Suave, that I wear in really cold weather, so that's not coming out quite yet, but it is a lovely fragrance nonetheless. Santal Austral is more of a transitional scent. It's a scent that I like to wear when it's still cold here, but it's not freezing cold. So in the spring and in the fall. This is a creamy, sweet, powdery, fluffy sandalwood. It's very, it's very resinous because there's tonka bean, there's vanilla tonka bean, and I know benzoin. So it has that lovely resinous sweetness. Iris is listed as a note, which almost certainly is giving it the, the powdery texture. And unlike Santel Complet, which is also like an ambery sandalwood, this is an ambery sandalwood, this is a monster. This is like four sprays will last forever. If you spray it on your clothes, it's going to last four days. So this has a monster performance. This is a just a gorgeous unisex sandalwood that I absolutely adore. Phenomenal performance, it's gorgeous. Going back to an oldie but goodie, I know it's cliche, I love to wear apple-centered fragrances for the fall. Apple is a fall fruit. And this is one that I had way before I started my YouTube channel. I still cannot pronounce it, La Danza de la Libelle. <laughs> you know what it is. Anyway, right here. There, by the House of Nobile, 1942. This is a, a red, a crisp red apple with whipped cream and a cinnamon stick. Definitely like a, a lighter apple pie, an apple tart with, without the goo. A light apple pie, fluffy, soft. There's an airiness to it. There's coconut in here. Not one of the more prominent notes. This is a lovely, light, sweet gourmand, again, 
I love to wear it for the fall and spring, but fall is when this shines. This just screams fall day. And because it's on the lighter side, the airier side, the softer side, it's one that I do wear to work because it's not going to, it's not gonna choke anybody out. It's, it's very soft, has a kind of a small scent bubble. I still haven't got sick of this. I will never declutter this one. It's just a really pretty gourmand in my opinion. Now, even though I forgot to say it at the beginning of the video, I'm trying not to put a ton of vanillas in this list because I'm gonna do another vanilla series. So there are a couple vanillas in this list. One of my favorite vanilla fragrances to wear for the fall for the past couple years is Divine Vanille by Essential Parfums, one of the best niche fragrance houses around. This is a perfect beginner niche house. All the perfumers that are recruited to work on these fragrances, they are very famous. This one is Olivier Pichot and has remained for now the third fall in a row, one of my go-to vanilla fragrances. This is a complex but not complicated vanilla that has a lot of depth and character. There are spices in here. There's cinnamon and clove. So I get a lot of cinnamon. It's very boozy. It's very, it's, there's a soft incense to it. It's very ambery and the way the notes are combined, it has a sweet tobacco vibe in here, even though tobacco is not listed as the notes. Now this one, this is similar to Herod, which is also in my collection. And I was slow to the fact that they are both by the same no, so it's no surprise that there are similarities between the two. This one is lighter, it's sweeter, it has more spices. Herod is a little bit heavier, it's a little bit richer, it's a little bit darker, there's a little bit more texture, more oomph. I love both, but this little guy, but this fragrance just doesn't get a lot of attention, and I think it gets overlooked as a gorgeous fall vanilla that I love to wear. Okay, so you have to have a cold, rainy day fall fragrance, and the one that has been my cold, fall, rainy day fragrance for two or three years has been Rie Chanel. It is my comfort fragrance on those type of dreary days. This was one of the first fragrances with a prominent note of fig that I really loved. This fragrance smells to me like a chai latte with a splash of fig syrup served in a sandalwood mug. And there's something about the combination of notes that is just very soothing, very comforting, very warm to me. It is on the softer side. I have tested the Extrait de Parfum in this version, and I'm, I'm good with this. I am doing, the Chris of 2022 is very different from the Chris of years past, where I would buy fragrances that I loved or liked even if they had a lot of similarity to, similarities to something that I already own. Well, that has added up to well over 200 fragrances, and I'm really kind of slowing down that behavior. So I'm going to enjoy the one that I have in my collection, and if I ever run through this, or if I ever get tired of it and I want to get the extra de parfum, I will do that. But for now, I'm really enjoying this as my cold, wet, rainy day autumn fragrance. Okay. I have picked up several amazing fragrances in the past three months. And it's been, I checked, it's been like five months since I did a haul video and that'll be coming up, I think this week. And one of the gems, one of the bangers, one of my very favorite fragrances from the past several months is a fragrance I tested over a year ago. But the problem was when I tested it, it was one of those crazy testing sprees where I would spray like six or seven fragrances on different body parts, like hand, wrist, arm. That just never worked out. And it just, when you do that, or when I do that, I just overlook fragrances for their uniqueness because there's just too much going on. And when I tried this fragrance on its own again, maybe a month ago, Oh my gosh, I was just blown away. And it is Triumph of Triumph of Bacchus by Argos and one of the prettiest bottles I own. Oh my gosh, this is a gorgeous, fruity, ambery tobacco vanilla that I am just 
dying over. This has a, a real sophisticated boozy sweetness. So there's peach and green apple. To me, it smells like they've been kind of marinating in rum. There's a gorgeous, I love spicy fragrances. I love fragrances that have cinnamon. So there's a cinnamony spiciness. There's saffron in here that gives it kind of that little bit of a leathery touch. And then, you know, as this fragrance just progresses over time, it becomes this beautiful, sweet, ambery tobacco fragrance that lasts forever. There's a nice kind of a creamy woodiness in the base. There's sandalwood in here. It just kind of adds to the mm, ambery, sweet, vanillic, ambery, tobacco-y goodness. I've already worn this like five times in the past two weeks. It's mm, so good. Okay, so the next one is a fragrance that I, or a fragrance house that is brand new. I think they started in 2020 and I found them on Instagram and they reached out to me and asked me if they could send me one of their fragrances for review. And I said, sure. They let me pick out which one I wanted and I looked at the fragrances and of course, being a gourmand, I picked the one that was the most gourmandy and that will be in another video. I was so impressed with that fragrance. I've posted it to Instagram. If you're over on Instagram, you've seen me post it. I was so incredibly impressed with that fragrance. I wanted to explore the house myself. So I ordered a really nice coffret that they offered. I'll put a picture up. And the coffret was five of their best sellers in like these 20, 20 ml uh, travel size. So I thought it was a great way to experience the house. And it was about that time that I placed my order, the UK equivalent of the USPS, the United States Postal Service, they went on strike. So my order got really delayed. It was delayed and delayed and delayed. And the gentleman who runs the, who is the sole UK distributor for this French line, and they're called the Fifth Cent, he DM'd me and said, I'm really, really sorry about this. How about I throw in an extra bottle for your inconvenience? And if you wouldn't mind reviewing it. And I said, no problem. I'm happy to do PR for companies that number one, don't tell me what to say. Number two, don't ask for my video ahead of time. And number three, basically just, there's no conditions attached. There's no codicil attached. And I asked for, I had initially told him, I don't really like Oud. Oud is not a safe note for me. But right about that time on their Instagram account, they came out with a new fragrance called Oud Sakura, which is this one. And it had one of the main notes is cherries. And I was like, please, can I try your Oud Sakura? He warned me. He said it was very heavy on the Oud and I might not like it. Okay, if I don't like it, I will be respectful but I will give you my honest opinion and review it as such. And he was totally fine with it. But anyway, so I have had a lot of bad luck with blind buying in the past maybe five, six months. I have basically slowed down substantially because I've just had a lot of doozies. It's made me really pull back on blind buying. And the thing with PR is if somebody sends you something, it is, it's a little bit tricky too, because you have to navigate giving an honest opinion, but not being disrespectful in your review. I was very nervous before this came to me. I was worried I wasn't going to like it. I felt like I'd totally lost my mojo, my fragrance mojo. I wasn't picking out anything good. And some of the PR that I have been given, I haven't really enjoyed. And you will see that in an upcoming haul video. So I was really, I didn't have high hopes for this. So when I opened this, oh my gosh, I couldn't tell you how happy I was. I was thrilled. This absolutely has a prominent oud note, but some of my very favorite fragrances have a prominent oud. It just has to be the right oud. For example, oud for greatness is one of my favorite fragrances. The oud is strong. I love it. It's very smoky oud, but it's an oud for me. Now the oud in here is most similar to the Oud in Miller Harris Scherzo that I did not like. Now it's similar, but it is tamped down and it's heading in that Oud direction. So it's a clean, strong Oud. It's heading in that direction, but it doesn't cross over into the screechy Oud that I was experiencing and did not enjoy in Scherzo. And I think I'm one of the very few people on the planet that just doesn't jive with that fragrance. So if you like the oud in that, you're going to love the oud in here. So that has a very clean, strong, non-screechy oud. There's also cherries. The cherry is not boozy, it's not syrupy, it's just, it's a little bit spicy, almost as if the 
cherries have been dusted in spices. So maybe there's cinnamon in here, maybe there's saffron in here. There's a little bit of smokiness. So there's some smokiness, whether that's from the oud, because some oud can be smoky, or whether that's a little incense in here. And this is just completely addictive. So I was so relieved. I love this. I've worn this three or four times. I've even worn it to work. It is very unisex. In fact, some of my coworkers said, you smell really good, but that smells like something that my husband could wear too. That was their way of saying it's unisex. Sometimes I don't know how to put it in perfume terms. This is long lasting, but not overpowering. And this fragrance house is kind of trying to break into the, the US, the market. They're trying to break into the market. So they have kindly offered my subscribers, my followers, a discount code. And I wanna say it's the Perfume Nest 30. I, I'm not affiliated, I get zero kickback whatsoever. He just offered that to my subscribers. So if you're interested, I think that the code goes through October, I might be able to extend it a little bit longer, but oh my goodness golly, I love cherry fragrances. This is right up there at the top and I will do a cherry video because I have so many cherry fragrances and cherry seems to be the note of the moment, as we shall say, a lot of cherry fragrances coming out. So Oud Sakura, perfect for the fall, perfect for cold weather, totally loving this. And the very last one, which I have to hurry as I think I'm on the very last juices of my battery, is another one that's relatively new to me, but has been on my radar for months. It is called Black Tie by the House of Celine. There are so many in this line that I am I have sampled and fallen in love with. This is a gorgeous vanilla. The vanilla in here is quite lovely, but there's definitely a simple elegance to this. This is not a powerhouse. This is not beast mode. This is not in your face. This is a soft, powdery, musky vanilla that's not overly sweet. It's not overly gourmand. I feel like I get a touch of rum soaked tobacco in here, which I don't believe, I think I looked it up. I don't think that's part of the listed notes, but I definitely get like a rum soaked tobacco. My eye is watering. It gets a little bit drier, less sweet, and more woody in the dry down. This has a surprisingly soft performance. It's on the softer side, it's on the quiet side, and it lasts around four to six hours. So this really doesn't scream like black tie to me. I would wear, for something black tie, I like a really a strong powerhouse, like a head turner fragrance. You know, with all the black tie events that I do attend, <laughs> which I don't. You know, I don't, I don't attend any black tie events. I haven't attended any black tie events for a long time. But when I go somewhere fancier, black tie-ish, I like to pick a fragrance that has some character. My dressed up fragrances tend to be statement makers. This is on the more demure side. So this has a little, you know, this is soft, classy sophistication to it, which I think makes it very, very versatile. You could wear that. This would be work appropriate because it's not like in your face and it's not overly sweet and has a nice soft powderiness to it. So that was it. Those are the rest of my fall lineup. I'll be doing separate videos on incense fragrances, on vanilla fragrances. I'm gonna do a whole series on vanilla fragrances. But this, in addition to my designer video, should round out some of the fragrances that I will be reaching for the most in the next couple months. So thanks for sticking around, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you on the next one.